everyone, it's Megan with Teach Me ABA, and today we are continuing with our Task List 5 study series, and we're going to be discussing Task List item B15, which is derived stimulus relations. Everyone's favorite topic. Just kidding. You guys probably hate this because it's super confusing, but you're going to love it after this video, I hope. So why do derived stimulus relations matter and why are they awesome? Because they are awesome. Derived stimulus relations are super cool because when we think about behaviorism generally, we think about operant behavior. So behaviors that occur because they've been reinforced in the past. But with derived relations, we actually see novel behaviors that haven't been reinforced before. Uh, so it's really cool and it's really useful when you are teaching verbal behavior to our individuals with developmental disabilities. Hopefully you guys know a little bit about Murray Sidman. If you don't, go read his stuff. It's really, well, his stimulus equivalent stuff isn't easy to read, but he has a lot of other cute articles. Today, we're gonna talk about the equivalence triangle. And it's confusing and feel free to watch this a couple times uh, because it's going to take a little bit of practice before you really understand what it means. Um, but when Murray Sidman did his research and discovered that individuals and even seals, there's a cool seal study, uh, can derive relations, they can learn things that haven't been taught to them. So you actually teach two things and then the person learns four things that are untaught. Uh, which is awesome, right? Because with these individuals who have disabilities, their learning curve tends to be a little slower. And so if we can teach things without actually having to spend the time teaching it, it can really accelerate their clinical outcomes. All right, check out this beautiful stimulus equivalence triangle that was developed by our behind the scenes guy, Kevin. So the first relation within stimulus equivalence is reflexivity. And this is the most basic one where you match something to itself. Um, so you've got the dog up here. And if you have an identical picture of a dog, reflexivity is putting that dog with itself. Our second relation is symmetry. So we see this when we teach that this picture of a dog is called dog, so matching it with that auditory stimulus. So symmetry, we teach this one, Oop, that's not symmetry yet, but when we probe, we go and test, oh, when I say dog, when they're presented with that auditory stimulus, can they touch the picture of the dog? And once they do this and it's untaught, that relation is symmetry. Okay, our third relation is transitivity. And so this is when we have two stimuli that we've never put together. So for example, our dog, picture of a dog, and the written word D-O-G. Say these two stimuli have never been presented, but we've taught that this dog goes with the auditory stimulus dog, and that the auditory stimulus dog goes with the written word dog. Transitivity is when you can connect that this picture of a dog goes with the written word dog and it's not taught. So you put those two together and that's our derived relation. Like, subscribe, and share us with your friends. Thanks for watching.